V minus E plus F equals 2. This is Euler's formula for polyhedra. It says that for a polyhedron, the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces is equal to 2. This looks like an arbitrary property and raises some questions. Why not V plus E plus F? Why is equal to 2? Why do all polyhedra satisfy it? And is there some deeper meaning behind it? In this video, I'll answer these questions using a single beautiful proof. But first let's test this formula on my D&D dice. For the four-sided die, the tetrahedron, there are four vertices, six edges, four faces, and four minus six plus four equals two. For the six-sided die, the cube, there are eight vertices, 12 edges, six faces, and again, 8 minus 12 plus 6 equals 2, and the formula remains true for the rest of them. The 8-sided octahedron, the 12-sided dodecahedron, and the critical 20-sided icosahedron. Euler proved this formula by starting with a polyhedron and removing pieces out of it in succession. He noted that with each removal, the quantity V minus E plus 2 would remain the same, and at the end, only a tetrahedron was left. There we know the formula is true. However, this proof does not answer the last question, as it fails to uncover the deeper connection this innocent looking equation has with topology. To uncover this connection, I'll follow the proof by French mathematician Adrien Marie Legendre. This is one of my favorite proofs, because it's simple, elegant, ingenious, and it gives insight into the equation. We start with a polyhedron and we choose a point inside of it. Then we put a polyhedron inside a sphere with the point chosen coinciding with the center of it. The next step, from the center we will project the edges onto the sphere. Just imagine the center of the sphere is a light bulb, then the shadow the edges cast on the sphere are exactly the projection. Mathematically, for any point in the edge we connect the center to it and we prolong the line until we reach the sphere and that's the projection of that point. After all the points are projected, we have the projection of the edges on the sphere. With that, we can now forget about the polyhedron and just focus on the sphere. Instead of worrying about the many types of polyhedrons, we just reduce the problem to spheres. And we can simplify it even further by changing the sphere size to have radius 1. Legendre then did a genius trick. He computed the same quantity in two different ways. In this case, the area of the sphere. The easier of the two is to directly apply the formula for the surface area of the sphere, given by 4 pi times the radius squared. And since the radius is 1, the area is just 4 pi. The second way is to sum the areas of the several divisions that we made. There's a simple theorem for the area of polygons in a unit sphere. It's called Girard's theorem. It says that the area of n side polygon on a sphere, with angles alpha 1 to alpha n, is given in radians by the angular excess. And remember that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Now, using the distributive law, we get a good way of visualizing this theorem. Each vertex contributes its angle to the area, each edge negatively contributes its angle, minus pi, and the interior contributes to the full angle of 2 pi. Now back to computing the area. Using the contribution of each part to the area, the sum of the individual areas is easy to compute. Around each vertex, the angles form a full angle, that is, 2 pi radians. And there are only v vertices, so their contribution to the area is 2 pi times v. Each edge belongs to two faces, so it contributes 2 times with minus pi, for a total contribution of minus 2 pi times e. Finally, each face contributes with 2 pi to the area, totaling a 2 pi times f contribution to the formula. The only thing left to do is dividing both sides by 2 pi to get the Euler formula for polyhedra. V minus D plus F equals 2. This proof shows that every decomposition of a sphere satisfies this formula. 
and the reason polyhedra is satisfied is because in the sense they can be molded and transformed into a sphere. For example, a projection is one of those ways. And in mathematics, we'd say that they are topologically the same as a sphere. I hope you found this as interesting as I did when I first read about it. I made this video for 3 blue and brown, the summer of math exposition. Thank you for listening.